Okay, let's try this again. Tried doing it before, didn't work out too weird. So, good morning. It is Saturday, December 2nd. Full slate of games go over, so let's jump right into it, shall we? Uh, case things started off in Binghamton, Elmira River Sharks coming into town, take on the Black Bears. Nice crowd, 3,600 plus on hand. Um, kind of an ugly game, not as far as any kind of goon tactics or anything like that. It's just Elmira didn't play well in the first period. Binghamton didn't play well in the second period. And then third period, both teams kind of started figuring things out. But in the end, it's a 6-4 victory for the Binghamton Black Bears. Uh, in the first, uh, Connor Smith scores at 14:47. Uh, Tyson Kirkby adds a goal a couple minutes later. Uh, it's 2 nothing after one. Uh, Binghamton out shooting at Elmira 18 to uh, 11 after at the start they got they were getting outshot five to one, uh, but most of, most of those five shots by Elmira were kind of innocuous. Um, and then Binghamton just turned it on, um, taking advantage again of Elmira not playing well. Thomas Ray scores on the power play 20 seconds into the third uh, into the second period rather, and then Elmira turns it on. Binghamton, you know, they go into a, a shell. And uh, Frank Trezera takes advantage, gets scoring on the power play. Um, Elijah Wilson, he scored, not, not Houston Wilson, but Elijah Wilson. There's two Wilsons on the team. Um, 10 06. So now the game's getting close. Up, oh, Frank Trezera says, uh, I'm going to do what I can to get my team going. And uh, yes, yeah, so Trezera ties it up. So Trezera had two goals in a 10 minute span. Um, played very well. Okay, so it's 3-3, three, three, and uh, finally we get in the third period. Both teams kind of settle down, and uh, yeah, their focus and discipline is back. Um, it, it's it's a more of a typical binghamton Elmira game. Uh, Dakota Bond scores on the power play at 201, and then Connor Smith gets what would be the game-winning goal. It's his second of the night at 932. Uh, Stephen Klink says not so fast. Uh, Elmira... Uh, pulls uh, goaltender uh, Brandon Collette. Yeah, it was not Kozlowski, it was Brandon Collette uh, playing. Uh, and uh, Stephen Klink scores with 2.11 left, so it's 5-4. to four. And then uh, Collette's pulled again. Uh, and Josh Fletcher uh, just kind of slides a 150-foot shot down the ice to the empty net at 19.20, and it's 6-4 final. So Trezera did have his two goals. Very nice performance by him. Stephen Klink also had an assist along with his goal. And uh, Colette scores at... Uh, uh, Colette scores. Yeah, Colette, no. <laughs> no goalie goal in this game. That that, that was the Penguins uh, a couple nights ago. Uh, Colette stopped 31-36. of Just not quite good enough. 57-52 um, uh, his time played. Uh, meanwhile, for the Black Bears, Connor Smith has two goals plus the game-winning goal. Um, Gavin Yates was one of two players who had two assists on the night. And Sam Levecchi, not his greatest game, but he stopped 35 of 39, good enough to get his sixth win. He's still undefeated. All right, so uh, on to what I would say was the most fascinating game of the night. Uh, Motor City taking on Danbury. Uh, Motor City, they look like they forgot to come off the bus, uh, except for except for Josh Colton. He scores, you know, 58 seconds or 38 seconds in, and bam, it's one nothing Motor City. But then uh, Motor City just went into a shell. They looked tired, and Danbury uh, took advantage. Um, <laughs> Danbury ended up out shooting Motor City 22 to six in the first period, and they weren't just perimeter shots. They were high-quality shots. So John McDonald, back from injury, he scores, put uh, gets Danbury to the, the tie-it-up mark, and then Mike Flanger, he scores. It's 2-1 to one at the end of one, but Danbury's firmly in control, uh, even starting into the first half of the uh, second period. Corey Cunningham. Uh, he made a very nice impression last night. He scores the first of his two uh, on the power play. And finally, about eight minutes in, Motor City figures out, hey, we got to start playing. So 
they start showing up and they start uh, peppering uh, Connor McCollum. TJ Delaney scores at 9-10. Uh, Brad Ritter adds a goal at uh, 16-25 in the power play. It's tied up. Uh, all right, so we go to the uh, third period and... Uh, yeah, highly, highly entertaining game. Scott Coash scores at 202. So Mortar City's up, and the Rocker fans, you know, back home are going nuts. But wait a minute. Uh Cunningham says, uh-uh, I'm not having any of that. 14 seconds later, he scores his second of the night. So it's tied up at four. The teams go back and forth, both goalies having to make several uh incredible saves. Uh McConnor and Babin both played great. So we go to overtime, and uh, so Danbury starts to press in the offensive zone, but Sam Dabrowski gets called for a slash at 22 seconds in. So into the box he goes, and uh, Motor City would take advantage of it. Uh, Derek McAmey, he scores about a minute 42 in, uh, but wait a minute, nope. Um, Let's look at this. Uh, The referees confer. They get out the tablet, look at video footage wave the goal off. But then Scott Koash said, okay, enough of this. 30 seconds later, he ends up scoring the game-winning goal. There was no doubt about it. You know, Motor City wins uh, 5-4 to four in overtime. Uh, good, loud crowd, uh, 1689 on hand. Not the biggest crowd, but a loud crowd. Um, and uh, Danbury ended up with 50 shots on goal. Babin saves 46 of them. But, uh, yeah, in the meantime... Uh, McCollum didn't have a bad night either. Uh, again, he made several high quality chances, stops 32 of 37. Uh, Cunningham with that two goal performance, very nice. Uh, Michael Falanja, he had himself a great game, a goal and assist as well. So, um, yeah, Motor City, uh, still hasn't lost in regulation, 9-0-3. Uh, Danbury falls to 6-8-1. Um, down south. Okay, the River Dragons and the Bobcats face off, and this game was not as close as the score indicated. Uh, Blue Ridge just had a real hard time generating offense. Now, Hunter Hall did score early on, um, but then uh, Columbus takes over. Uh, they they had a 13-3 edge in shots in the first period. Uh, their defense was very good at just taking away shot opportunities from the uh, Bobcats. Uh, Justin McDonald scores, Peter Antonio scores uh, early in the second, Storja Hand scores, it's 3-1. to one. Uh, Blue Ridge does come back to tie it. Uh, Siolik has one of the goals. Uh, but uh, then uh, Columbus just says, okay, we let you, you know, we, we gave you a chance. Now we're going to put this away. So uh, Cody Wickline, he scores 18-28. And then midway through the third period, Sorjahan would get the game-winning goal. Uh, at the end of the game, uh, Jacob Wolf, he gets a, uh, he gets a goal at 18:22 to make it interesting. But Alexander Jameev scores at 19:28, and there you go, it's six to four. Uh, Joseph made 16 saves out of a possible 20 shots. He didn't face a lot of rubber. Um, Sorjahan had those two goals and an assist including, you know, he also had the game-winning goal, and Cody Wickline, a goal and assist. Jacob Wolf and Chris Siolik, both a goal and assist. And Connor Green stopping 29 of 35. Uh, Columbus, they're now 8-1-2, and two, still in first in the Continental. Blue Ridge falls to 3-8-2, and two, 10 points. And they've got to look out behind them. We'll get back. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, so uh, Port Huron taking on Carolina for the first of three this weekend in the Annex. And, uh, yeah, this yeah, Port Huron just never really seemed to be really, really in it. Uh, at one point they got close, but, uh, yeah, Carolina handles them quite easily. Uh, goals by Nate Keeley at 8.30 of the first. And Gus Ford, uh, first minute of the second period, uh, put Carolina up for the uh, uh, two to two to nothing at that point. Uh, Ford's goal was all they needed. Uh, the only offense Port Huron generated was a score by Brandon Picard uh, just into the third period on the power play. And uh, then 
Mistuka and Baker end up putting things away for the Thunderbirds. Um, and that's it. So it was a small crowd, uh, surprisingly a small crowd, uh, 2650 on hand. A lot of people commented online is like, where are all the people? Uh, because, you know, first three games, Carolina packed out the annex. Um, so maybe just a lot of stuff going on otherwise. Um, so who knows? So anyway, uh, Picard has his goal. Um, Makar Sokolov, who started for the Trawler, stops 34-37 in uh, just uh, under 60 minutes. It was 59-42. Ford with the game-winning goal and an assist. Uh, Baker with a goal and assist. And Cavalier continues to do Cavalier things. Uh, Yeah, Mario stopped 25 of 26. Gets himself another win. Lowers his goals against... Raises his save percentage. Are you surprised? No, neither am I. All right. So we go to the final game of the night. And this was the game that a lot of people were talking about because this was ugly, uh, pugilistic style. Now, you know this game was going to be getting kind of gritty when uh, Baton Rouge announced that they signed Taylor Cutting earlier in the day. So, and sure enough, he did not disappoint. He uh, he had his participation in things. So, um, oh, I forgot to mention with the records, uh, Carolina 9-2, uh, Port Huron falls to 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. I forgot to mention that. All right, so back to Baton Rouge. Um, okay, so I watched a, a part of this game. And I'm not going to lie, um, I ended up falling asleep because... Uh, 7.30 Central is 8.30 Eastern. That's way too late. Um, Baton Rouge, go go to 7 o'clock starts. Don't go to 7.30 starts. Anyway, um, so, yeah, Soterios uh, Karagiorgios, he had himself quite a game. He was easily star of the game. Uh, he gets uh, Bar- Baton Rouge on the board at uh, 10.27. And now... Yeah, going up through uh, up into this game, Baton Rouge has obviously struggled on offense, uh, but they just struggled in a lot of areas uh, that are not goaltending. Goaltending, they've been fine, but uh, otherwise, it's been a real battle for Baton Rouge. But last night, they just put everything together. Um, Lucas Helen does score at fifteen forty eight, so Mississippi's tied up. It's one one going you know, going to the latter part of the first period and then all hell breaks loose. Uh bench clearing brawl. Uh we've got uh haymakers left and right being uh, being laid. Um so yeah, at eighteen seventeen, huge bench clearing brawl. Um we have Matt Bazarin and Adamo Asselin for Baton Rouge, getting game missed ducks. Meanwhile, Richard Bikowski and Yanni Lariakos, who assisted on the Helen goal, uh, he ended up getting the gate as well. Uh, Lariakos for a third man in. So it was just uh, kind of gross. Not sure if any suspensions are going to come out of this. Uh, it seemed like the referees got control of this game for the most part. Um at that point, we go on into the second period, and uh, uh, let's see, Don Carter Jr., he scores on the power play, and uh, guess what, that ended up being the game-winning goal, too. Uh, but anyway, uh, Austin Weber scores, uh, 58 seconds of the third period, and then, I'll be honest, I fell asleep, because uh, the game was too late. So late in the game, Karagios adds a second goal on the power play, again, another Ruhaha, uh, about 13 and a half minutes in. Jake Cox closes out the scoring 1906. And surprise, surprise, from what I saw, Baton Rouge dominated this game. 5 1 win. Mississippi falls to 6 6 and 1, 18 points. Baton Rouge climbs to 3 10 and 0. Oh. They are now just two points behind the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Uh, good crowd, 3,500 plus. Uh, Blake Weyrick. Not a good night for him, 27 to 32. And Greg Hussey had another fantastic night, stopping 25 of 26. Uh, he's playing great. Uh, Caragios with two goals and two assists. 
uh, one of the best performances of the night in the Fed. So there we go. Um, that's the wrap up for today, or the Saturday summaries. Um, make sure to continue to follow me. Catch me on YouTube tomorrow as we review tomorrow's games. And uh, keep in touch on Facebook and uh, and uh, Spotify as well. We're only uh, 10 people away from 1,000 followers, so thank you. All right, I'm Gary Ryan for the Fed League Flash. Have yourself a great day.